Joining me now is former White House Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor at Bondi Partners, Mick Mulvaney. Mick, massive, massive stuff coming out of this Department of Justice report on classified documents. We've got to start with this absolutely damning details of this report. They have called him, the special counsel has called him, a Joe Biden, a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. Now, this sounds like a description of the guy who sits and feeds the pigeons in my local park, but I wouldn't want him to be president. More damningly, the report also says Joe Biden's memory had significant limitations and that this recorded conversation often painfully slow with Mr. Biden struggling to remember events and at times straining to read and rely on his own notebook entries in 27 conversations, 2017 conversations with Mark Zwanitzer, who helped him write two memoirs. Mick, two questions for you. Number one. Does this prove what I have said for a long time, that other people, particularly Barack Obama, are really running the show in this White House? And number two, with this sort of official judgment on his faculties, how long can Joe Biden continue as president? Um, let's take the second one first, James. They're both good and fair questions. He can, can continue as president as long as those around him want him to. There's only really one or two mechanisms for removing a president of the United States. And unless he's committed a high crime or misdemeanor and wants or wants to resign under his own terms, the only other way to do it is by having the cabinet vote him out. And that is the method that is sort of contemplated under the 25th Amendment, that if a president is of diminished capacity, the cabinet would get together and get rid of him. Keep in mind, every time that Donald Trump slipped up and said one instead of two or Monday instead of Tuesday, the, the media here was demanding that the cabinet kick him out using the 25th Amendment. So we're all very familiar with that mechanism, thanks to the media left here in this country. Now, to hmm. your first question, uh, who's really running the show? Uh, it's a fair question. It's not the Obama people. Keep in mind, they don't like each other. Um, Barack Obama famously said one time, don't underestimate Joe's ability to <laughs> blank things up. There's no love lost between the two teams, between the two men. Um, there's probably more people from the Clinton administration advising Joe Biden right now than there are from the Obama administration. But the bottom line is it's the Obama team, excuse me, the Biden team by themselves. And that's one of the reasons they're screwing up as badly as they are. But, Mick, there's so much stuff in this that is damning, and it seems to put the left and the Democrats in the White House in a real double bind, because in this it says Joe Biden admitted that he found classified documents, I think, under the stairs in his house um, and other places. So he's admitted to it. And yet they said we can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this is something worth charging him with simply because essentially they said his mental capacity seems to be diminished. So they couldn't really charge him with knowing what he was doing. If they go and charge Trump with this stuff, that means they're saying, well, Trump has mental capacity, but what Trump has been saying about Biden, that he does it, is correct. And now you moved on to the politics of it, which is just as fascinating as the practicalities and the legalities of it. Here's what just happened today with this report. Donald Trump's uh, uh, sort of liability related to his documents case went down dramatically. The Department of Justice has admitted they are not going to charge Joe Biden for offenses that look to be much more serious than what we've heard about the charges against Donald Trump. These documents were a lot more serious. They had to deal with things happening in Afghanistan. They were documents that he's had for a long time. They're documents that he had out in his garage where the public could see it. In fact, there's a video online now where you can go and you can watch him backing his car out of his garage and you can see the documents on the internet or at least the box that they are in. So this is really going to have a dramatic political uh, uh, um, impact helping Donald Trump on his documents case, dealing with his documents, Mar-a-Lago. But your larger point is the one that everybody's talking about here right now, which is, can Joe Biden continue to run for office when even his own Department of Justice says he comes across as a doddering old man, because that's what this report says. Well, and I mean, this would seem to be a complete campaign ad for Trump, uh, you know, or whoever runs against him, because it says, you know, he wasn't across the details of the Afghanistan debate, which he was intimately involved in. Um, he couldn't remember when his term as vice president was and when he started as president. He had trouble with dates, including not being able to 
place in time the death of his son Bo, which would, of course, be a terrible and traumatic event for anybody. Um, people will obviously be asking the question, is it, you know, is he at all capable of running for president and staying in for another four years? This would seem to be a gift to the Republicans, whoever it is, presumably Trump. And you and I have talked a lot over the course of the last six, eight months about would there be a, a dramatic event that would prompt the Democrat Party to get together and say, now we really need to do this is this is too far. We, this is gone now. We have to figure out who else is going to run for president because it cannot be Joe Biden. I, I still think they cannot do that before the convention in July and August. But my guess is, and it's an educated guess, those conversations are happening in a bunch of Democrat leadership offices as of tonight, because this is going to be a major, major problem politically for the Democrats. And keep it, let's remember one thing, Joe, uh, uh, James, and that's this is, you hate to say this, but it's the truth. He's not going to get better. President yeah. Biden is not going to get, he's going to continue to get worse, and everybody knows it. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about some other political stuff that's been happening here, too. Um, Nevada. Now, we've spoken about Nikki Haley uh, and her attempts uh, to unseat Donald Trump for the nomination, or at least make trouble for him. They had a non-binding primary in Nevada this week. Nobody, none of the above, beat Nikki Haley by more than a two-to-one margin. Who is still coming out for her? Why is she still in this? Are we going to see her pull the pin before South Carolina, or will she at least stick through that one? Yeah, well, the, the folks that are coming out from her now, for her now, and keep in mind, Nevada is strange because they're one of three states that have a caucus and a primary. I was even familiar with that until this year, so it's very, very yeah. strange. Um, he wasn't on the ballot in this primary. She won't be on the ballot in the caucus. It's just bizarre. But the bottom line is this. There are more anti there are more pro-Trump people right now than anti-Trump people. You ask the question, who's turning out for Nikki Haley? It is the anti-Trump wing of the party. And yeah. that's about a 65-35 type of break right now. That's where she is, James, more importantly than Nevada, in South Carolina, her home state. She's about three weeks away from that election, and she is still down by 25 points in the polls. That's just amazing. Now, I want to ask you very quickly about one other thing that's been happening the last few hours. Uh, the Supreme Court has been hearing arguments around whether or not Colorado can kick Donald Trump off the ballot. Now, the questioning seems to have gone very poorly for the Colorado attorney who was arguing the case that he should be removed from the uh, from the ballot, with even Jonathan Turley saying that it was the left uh, justices who seem to have some of the worst uh, attacks on their arguments. Is this going to put an end to this whole thing where people say, oh, well, to protect our democracy, we can't have democracy? Yeah, I, I think it is. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of discussion now um, about this possibly, possibly being a nine to zero decision at the Supreme Court to keep Trump on the ballot in Colorado. And once that happens, all the other state uh, objections uh, probably are going to melt away. Um, that would be that would be something in this day and age in our United States Supreme Court. A nine to zero decision on any topic is is increasingly rare. So if a nine to zero decision comes out for Donald Trump on this ballot uh, measure, my guess is that will put a pin in this debate and it will be finished and we'll move on to the next uh, round of lawsuits, including whether or not the president is immune from these uh, from sorts of criminal actions as a private citizen. Mick Mulvaney, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. But boy, there's a lot going on. Thank you so much for your time and your analysis.